So, welcome to the BGDC Blender Workshop for Games. Uh, we're going to be going over some textures as requested, but also going to cover these three objects here, and they're going to show different parts of Blender and how to use Blender. So we got some rocks. Uh, these can be procedurally generated, and just some quick, easy details to add to a game. A spaceship, and a bottle. I'm going to do the bottle first, because it'll, it's pretty simple, and it'll get you used to how Blender is controlled. So without further ado, I'm going to get started with the bottle. And if you guys need any help, just raise your hand, I'll be walking around. Yeah, feel free to ask questions while we're going. Tell me if I'm going too fast or too slow. Uh, so if everyone has Blender, Blender open, one of the first things you want to do is install some add-ons and change the preferences. So you go up here to the edit menu and preferences. And in key map, the spacebar action should be search, not play. And then make sure select is set to left. <laughs> and then once you've got that spacebar action set, go to add-ons, and you're just going to search for Pi. And the add-on is called 3D Viewport Pi Menus. If you don't have this one showed up, and or maybe there's two showing up, then you probably have a wrong version of Blender. And that's all right. You, you just have to carry on without the auto. So it's 3D viewport pie menus. Uh, do you want to make sure that they enable everything? Oh yeah, it should already be automatically enabled because it's the it's the 2.81 version. Yeah. You have A unselected there. I have a couple unselected just because this one I'm used to. Yeah. I have A unselected. Yeah, A. You probably want to unselect A. I just don't want people to have like double confusion because you might do something different. All right, so once everyone has that uh, plug-in add-on installed. It's just the yeah, one. The Pi one. Yeah, it's just the Pi one. And then disable A. You can select Pi one. Yeah, hotkey. Mm -hmm. That one? OK. What I'm already enabled? I missed that. I just got it. Oh, OK. Let me go back to uh, this. No, no, that, that's, that's enabled. Here. Yes, I got Pi. Yeah. And do all. Uh, it's called no, search Pi. No, I already did that. I'm just yeah. saying that, like, there should be a few that are enabled. Like, okay. I'm assuming I have I, I added pot to the eight. Okay. Did you change it to the A was unselected? Yeah. No. Right, it, well, it's not selected. Well, that, that was the thing. Like, that, that's why I was saying like it's weird. No, no, no. Go into pie menu. Oh, pie menu specifically. Yeah, pie menu does is it speeds up your workflow a lot. Oh, I didn't see that. These are all disabled. Oh, okay. Instead of having to drag and mouse all the way through the entire menu, you can just drag and mouse all the way through the corresponding so it's just a quick access for a lot of the common commands. Okay. Uh, for me personally, so that little I just want control S. Oh, the eyeballs. Oh, and I want to be one that says A. Right there. What doesn't actually go? Access to the great things. And then we have the, uh, yeah. So you can uncheck X, A, and control S. So now that we got that, we can, uh, you, probably, you guys probably have like a cube and a camera and a light in there. So I'm going to just like go to new. You, you guys are probably looking at this, right? Mm -hmm. So A is select all. And then alt A is unselect all. So you just got to get used to that. A is select everything and alt A is deselect everything. You're going to use that a lot. So you select everything and you press X to delete. You'll get this. Uh, dialog box to confirm. If you just press the delete key, it'll just straight up delete. But I prefer just using the dialog box because sometimes you'll accidentally not want to delete something. But in this case, we want to delete everything. Uh, now you have an empty plane, empty space. To move the camera, the middle mouse button is in orbit. Holding down shift and middle mouse button is a pan. And then control middle mouse button is zooming in and out. So middle mouse button is to move the camera. Uh, if you don't have a mouse, you can always use these gizmos up here. This is like 3DS, Max, or Autodesk style. You can move this little thing, uh, zoom in and out here, and for now I'm just going to disable them because I'm going to use them. So now it's empty, and I hope you guys know how to move the camera. So now let's add an object. Uh, at the top here, there's a couple options called View, Select, Add, and Object. In the Add drop-down, we're going to add a mesh, 
as a cylinder. Before you click anything else after adding the cylinder, you'll see this box here at the bottom called Add Cylinder. If you press F9, it'll bring up this Properties box for the cylinder. This is the same box that's down here. It's just F9 is a shortcut to bring it to your mouse. And once you have this open, you can select how many vertices you want in your cylinder. So fun fact, how to make a triangle in Blender, you start with a circle and you erase the details, and now you have a triangle. <laughs> just one of the perks of Blender. So pick a number of vertices that seems reasonable. The default is 32. And then once you're done, you can like click anywhere on the screen to confirm it. So now you should have a cylinder object in Blender. Um, it's pretty neat. Tab will bring you to edit mode. So <laughs> tab brings you to edit mode. And then tab brings you out of edit mode. The difference between edit mode and object mode is in object mode you can manipulate the whole thing. You have to click on the object. And once you're in edit mode, you'll start seeing vertices and faces and edges. This is where you actually start modifying the mesh. This is going to go to edit mode. Yeah. Up here, you'll see three little boxes. This is your edit, your selection mode. The first one is vertices. The second one is edges, and the third one is faces. The shortcuts are one, two, and three. So if I press 3, I can now select faces on the cylinder. If I select 2, I can start selecting uh, edges. And if I press 1, I'll start selecting vertices. If I'm in edge select mode, and I hold down Alt, and click, a vert click an edge, it selects the whole edge loop. And this is really useful when you, have, uh, when you start having complicated shapes, and you just want to quickly get a loop around the shape. This doesn't work all the time. <coughs> It's just a little bit finicky of how loops are calculated. Uh, so this is a bottle. So now we've got this top loop selected. E is extrude. So you press E and then move your mouse, and you'll start extruding whatever you selected upwards. You can click to confirm. And S is scale. So now you're scaling what you just selected. So now you can scale it down a little bit, and that kind of starts looking sort of like a bottle. And then if you extrude again, now it looks more like a bottle. But it's still not quite there. We can select this bottom edge loop, and the key G is a grab, and you can grab stuff around. This is kind of messy, so now we're going to lock it to an axis by pressing Z and that'll lock it to the Z axis. Z is up. So now I've grabbed it by pressing G and locked it to the Z axis by pressing Z. And I can only drag it in the Z axis. So I can bring this up and give it more of a bottle proportions. This is a pretty sharp looking bottle, so I can smooth it out. Control B is a shortcut for bevels. If you don't like the shortcut, then on the left, you can see these uh, tools. If you don't have this, you press T. And that'll bring up or down the tools the dialog box over here. And the bevels are somewhere on here doubled. You might want to go come through the hot keys again and use that as Okay, so G is for dragging. And then any letter for an axis will lock it to that axis. So Z locks it to the Z axis. X locks it to the X axis. Uh, and then Y locks it to the Y axis. And then I press S to scale things. Oh, well, I have something to do. S to scale things, G to grab things, Control B to bevel, or the bevel tool on the left. So I press Control B to bevel, and now I have the bevel uh, dialog box options. And you'll have width and segments. And those are really the only important ones you care about. All this other stuff gets more advanced. Uh, half of it you never use anyway. So width, effect, width changes how much it's doubled by. Clamp overlap will prevent uh, the width from passing through the mesh and you get start getting weird results like that. Whoa. So clamping overlap will stop that from happening. Uh, and then segments gives it more polygons. So I can increase the segments to make it look smoother. 
profile just changes the angle, so you can make it bevel inwards or outwards. The default 0.5 is just a 45 degree angle. If you beveled it to the max, you might not notice at first, but there's actually overlapping uh, geometry here of this top edge. All right, so you're going to want to go to the bevel thing? To quickly zoom into what you've selected, um, you can press the period on the number pad. If you don't have a number pad, you can press the tilde or accent key to bring up the wheel for a simulated number pad. So the view selected is what you want. And it'll just zoom the camera into whatever you selected and recenter your view. So when you move the mouse for the camera, you're now orbiting around what you've selected. Yeah, hey, I'll throw a quick question. How do I get the menu for the bevel up? Uh, T. T. Okay. No, 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 not the, to select it once you're like the little side menu where you're at. F9. F9? That's not working. Okay. There. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I brings up your previous actions <laughs> option box. Okay. Um, well, just quickly, sorry. Um, An entire circle. How did you select the ring? Alt. Of, uh, and just alt? Pull down alt, alt. That's, uh, you're on faces right now, so you want to be on edges right there. So alt, and then click that little bit. There you go. this edge, um, yeah, so I create some polygons that are there. We can get rid of those overlapping geometries a couple ways. The preferred way would be to uh, just merge the vertices that are right next to each other. So you can press Alt-M, and that'll bring up the merge in box. And then we're going to do by distance. And at the bottom, a blue info box came up that said remove 32 vertices. So that just removed all the vertices that were overlapping around this top edge. So now this is all just one continuous mesh. And that's really useful for cleaning up a, me a mesh that's gone messy. Another way would just be to right click. And no, never mind. Right click has a lot of useful stuff uh, that isn't really bound to a specific uh, shortcut. I don't see. OK, well, never mind. All right, so now we got this bottle shape. We can make it more bottle-like. Grab the top base again. Uh, G, let's grab it. Z to lock the Z axis, bring it up a bit. Extrude some, and then just start scaling it, what you've extruded to make it more bottle-like. And I'm going to bring the bottom down as well. So really all I've done is just extrude and scale with it. Extrude and scale. That's all I've done. So I'm seeing that, that only works on one side, it doesn't pass all the way through? Uh, oh, good question. So you can enable x-ray mode. Oh, okay. uh, there's a shift, you can, you can do Alt-Z for toggling x-ray, okay. and that'll let, you start, that'll let you select things that are behind other things. The other way is to do the wireframe shader. So Z brings up the, the shader settings, or the shader options, mm -hmm. and just go to wireframe. It's not the wireframe shader, so I can start selecting things that are behind other. Uh, is there a shortcut to lock it, to lock the camera to an axis? Oh, yeah. So the number, the keypad is what does that. So on the, on the keypad, you press 1 or 3 or 7. If you don't have a keypad, the tilde key emulates the keypad. So you have left, front, top. Or if you have these gizmos up, you just click these letters. There's, there's a lot of ways of doing it, yeah. Uh, so that's an orthotropic lock. You can also change it from a perspective camera. It's perspective right now. I can change it to the uh, orthographic view by pressing 5 on the number pad, or by clicking this button here, or uh, I guess I can't do it from here. 
since we have the pi menu, you can do alt q. Uh, yeah. Perspective bar. Click alt select. You're on Facebook. And then hold on that. So you hold on this long on the bottom. And then this one. If we exit edit mode and we're happy with the bottom menu, you can kind of see that it's really polygonal and you can see all the flat faces. So right now the default shading is shade flat. So it's shading all of these faces really sharply. If you press spacebar to bring up the search and type in shade, you'll see shade flat and shade smooth. You can do shade smooth. That looks a little bit better, but it kind of just looks like a blob of smooth shading. So now we're going to go over here to our uh, properties. The green triangle is a is the mesh settings, and then there's this tab called normals, and an auto smooth checkbox. So what auto smooth will do is if you have smooth shading enabled, auto smooth will automatically uh, right click on the sharpen uh, smooth shading where you have uh, an angle that's greater than what you uh, specified. Right click. So if you lower this angle. It's going to be sharp, and if we increase it, it can be smooth. The default 30 degrees is usually good enough. Do you do smooth shading? You can always manually uh, adjust the smooth shading by selecting edges, right clicking, and you can mark sharp edges or clear sharp edges. So you can increase the smooth shading all the way, and then just manually mark where sharp edges you where you want some sharp edges. And then you'll see how it's kind of sharpened these edges here. Mm -hmm. Auto smooth is recommended when you're exporting stuff because the game engine will complain that there's no smoothing groups. Uh, auto smooth gives you those smoothing groups. What is auto smooth connected to? Is that per object? Is it seen? It's the mesh vertices or the mesh edges. It's it's part of your mesh settings. So there's whenever uh, you're calculating the normals, there's like an angle. And it'll smooth that angle of every shade. So, okay. so if you go see, like, currently Alberta has it set to 22.2 degrees. Mm -hmm. If something falls between that, it'll smooth it over. Is there something you enabled before that started working? Yeah, right. Uh, shade, uh, shade, shade smooth. Yeah. So, what you're going to want to do is go to object mode. Uh, so, tap out of uh, edit, which I think you're actually in object mode right now. So, we're going to use object. Yeah. Oh, is shade smooth for objects? Yes. Oh, so that's my transfer. Okay. okay. So we can make a smooth cube. I, I made the cube shade smooth. I turn on auto smooth. So it's not smooth now for the faces because they're 90 degrees. But if we increase the angle to 90 degrees, uh, it'll start shading smooth. Yeah. Now, now it's shading angles. It's smooth shading angles less than 90 degrees. So when you use Z to get the shade smooth, is that, so then, is that a property of the model yes. or, the, or the object? Or the other one. Uh, yes. I didn't press Z. I just shade smooth and auto smooth both come with it. Uh, auto smooth won't work unless you have shade smooth for the object. What can you shade smooth so is Blender's version of like trying to just do everything, and auto smooth is like a sub option that lets you kind of more or less be a little bit more specific about it. Thank you. Um, so with your bottle, there's the one section that you marked to not smooth. Oh yeah. How do you do that again? Uh, well, you select your edges, and then you can either right click to do mark sharp, or Control E is the edge specific option. So I selected, I pressed Alt to select the whole ring, mm -hmm. and then right click, and then mark sharp. How often do you use Mark Sharp? Uh, when I have a shape that I kind of want to override the smoothness. So like in this case, uh, let me clear Sharp on everything and go back to default 30. So in this case, it made this edge sharp. Yeah. But in a bottle, that should be smooth. Yeah. So I just increase the angle until it was smooth. Um, and then I would go over here and then override these to be sharp. That's not ideal. Uh, probably I would probably just like make add more geometry if I'm building it like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's probably better. Any 
and you said with the overlapping vertices, where did those come from originally? Those came from when I had, uh, so let me, so I had this, Is everyone else doing this? and I doubled it, mm -hmm. I yeah, increased the segments, and I went oh. all the way, right, clamping the overlap, so like the maximum I can go without overlap. I can walk you through what we've already done. So it's that edge so, right over there. So this edge here, the and this sure. edge here, mouse on you? they join together, yeah, yeah. but they weren't merged. Um, so it's two overlapping edges perfectly, creating extra geometry we don't want. So I selected everything, yeah, all really, of them, really really merge by distance, mm -hmm. and it automatically merged all the vertices around here. Because if not, uh, this vertice, like you bring it down, so it's an extra face there, we don't want that. Okay, yeah, so you're going to, if you click the, if you... Alright, now we can bring up the properties of the object by pressing N. So like, and you'll see here some transform options. Like I can click so we can rotate by pressing R. And then if you press R once, it's a pivot rotate around the axis of the camera. So right now it's rotating around like what I'm looking at. If you press R again, now it's doing a pivot rotate around just like an orbit. So it's like a grabbing the surface and then spinning it around. You probably have to play with it to get used to how that feels. Uh, but you'll see over here the rotations have changed. I'm going to undo. I'm going to change the scale by pressing S again. And you can do axis here too. So you can do X, whoa, Y, Z. All right, now it's upside down. It kind of looks like a baseball bat. Uh, it looks fine, right? But the scale is negative, so it's actually flipped the normals of the mesh inside out. That's a problem because if we go over here to our shading, uh, viewport shading options, it's just a drop down. You can't see it, press M. Uh, the trend, yeah, if you can't see the transform dialog box, you can press N to bring up the, the side menu. But this drop down uh, will enable back face culling. And that, that would not be where I wanted. So this drop down. Fine. And then, okay. Okay, well, anyway, uh, you can apply the scale and make this a one to one scale again by pressing Control A. And now you have this wheel. We can apply the rotation, we can apply the location, and we're going to apply the scale. So now, ah, now the scale is one to one to one, but our normals have been inverted. So now the, the bottle is inside out, essentially. And you actually can't tell unless you've enabled back face coding, because by default Blender will kind of hide it and just render it fine. But when you import it into Unity or another, uh, another software, you'll see it inside out. So enable back face coding if you want to see the back faces to be invisible. To fix this, you can go into edit mode, select everything. Shift N is going to recalculate the normals. You can also search uh, normals, recalculate normals. This Shift N is a shortcut. And it will recalculate, no recalculate the normals to be the right side up. Uh, if you want to overwrite it manually, you can check the inside. You can actually manually invert the normals to what you just did. That's useful for when you just have a singular plane that you just want to flip around. So here's a singular plane. Shift N doesn't do anything, so I flip it now it's upside down. Uh, in this case, I don't need that. All right. Go. Mm -hmm. Who's happy with their bottle? Okay. Who wants to export it to Unity? Mm -hmm. to... Woo! I'll export this for the Unity. Yes. So, all right, so, so when you're exporting to just general practice is just use FBX file. Um, FBX is an Autodesk format. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Basically, you have to be in edit mode, but whenever you're in edit mode, is you there just a quick answer to, shift to why that software is almost to face the way that? It's just an industry standard, just Autodesk. It's best. No, Autodesk. Oh. Uh, Maya is Autodesk, and Mac is Autodesk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Maya and 3ds Max are industry programs for modeling, and they use FBX. So an FBX will export mesh data, it'll export texture data, animations, rigging. So FBX can do all of that. I think OBJ can also do that, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Uh, projects. Just going to stick it here, I guess. Follow. When you export something, you want to make sure you export with selected objects and a scale of 1. 
uh, your scale might be different. Always make sure your scale is one to one to one, because the scale will save in the FBX. If your scale is not one to one to one in the object, then when you export the FBX, the XBX will keep that fake scaling. Uh, and then when you put it into your, your game, it won't be one to one to one. And that'll just get really messy. So you'll make sure your rotation, your location, and your scale is all applied. And then you click on selected objects. And that should be good. If you don't um, do selected objects, that's only one I'm making your scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that but when you have more objects, it will just put everything into one FBX. Yeah. And when you put that into Unity, it's going to be an FBX scene or a prefab. And everything just joined together and it's hard to split things apart without just like redoing everything. That's all. Okay, and I already have Unity open. Uh, make a new folder called. Meshes. Oh, that's a material. Your mouse and select everything. Sorry. So, Unity's pretty cool. You can just drag and drop an FBX. I'm and just going to drag and drop this FBX to here. And there it is. There's the bottom. All right. So now and we're whoa, it's gigantic. It's after he's done with um, uh, this whole situation. Oh, it's like it's another thing, like rocks or something. So, okay. one of the reasons it's gigantic is because and just uh, ask me any question. Question. Unity uses yeah. meters, yeah. but then Blender also uses meters. One Blender unit is a hundred Unity units, <laughs> so the scale in Unity is a hundred by a hundred by a hundred. I don't know. It's when it's on Unity units. <laughs> uh, there's no dimensions anywhere, as far as I know. But that's pretty gigantic. So we can go back over here. So these meters. So it's eleven meters tall. That's how tall it is in here. So this is eleven meters tall. Uh, let me shrink this down. So if I don't apply the scale and just leave it like that, when I export the FBX, I'm going to overwrite it. And then I'm going to delete this one. And now it's tiny, but the scale is 23.5268. That's not very useful. Uh, I want this to be an even number so that when I scale it, I know like a relative scale, like one or two scale or half scale. Uh, so I'm going to delete it again. Apply the scale. Re-export it. And now it's 100 scale again. Uh, the prefab in Unity will have materials. By default, it'll import materials from Blender. Uh, that's okay, but ideally you want to overwrite this to whatever the material is supposed to be. So I'm going to just pick one. Alright. So there it is. There's our bottom. Our bits of that. Alright, next we're going to do a rock. Or, do you guys want to do a rock or a spaceship first? Rock or spaceship? Oh, rock is procedural, spaceship is more of this. Uh, rock. Rock. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're we'll gonna apply the scale. Hmm? I'm gonna start uh, the scale. Hey, Alberto, I'm huh? getting an issue over here with uh, yeah. Unity on half of Unity and loading that in files. You know anything about that? It's mm -hmm. Apple, so I don't know anything about that. Uh, Maybe it's like an importer uh, thing that Unity doesn't have for Mac. I don't know. Try OBJ. OBJ is a Windows file. Mm -hmm. Applying the scale, I couldn't because of the control. Okay. Another way of doing it, if I don't want to do it, is an object. All these things are right here. Apply scale. Apply down here. So on the object drop down, you can apply your scale. I don't know if you. I might. I actually have mine. 
So collections are Blender's version of layers. Older version of Blender actually had layers. Uh, newer version of Blender has collections, which are very, which are much better because they're actually more like folders instead of just layers. Uh, so I've created a new collection. I'm gonna uncheck the first one. In this new collection, add a cube. Gonna add mesh cube. This is gonna be our rock. It doesn't look like it yet, but trust me. It'll be a rock. Uh, go into edit mode as always. Vertices select, so up here on the left most left one, or just press 1 on the keyboard. Select any vertice you want, your favorite one, I don't care. And then just press G to drag it wherever you want. Just like you mess up these vertices. <laughs> so just drag it sort of like that. Right. You can click it. Now these polygons are kind of messed up. These, are, these used to be flat squares, and now there are these weird triangle things that are kind of plain, but not really. Uh, these are invalid surfaces. So it's a non-planar surface, but Blender's trying its best to render it as a plane. When you export this, the exporter will automatically triangulate everything. Uh, that can be random, just because you're not, you don't, you don't have control over that. So you can manually triangulate here just by pressing Control T and that's going to triangulate everything for us. The reason triangulating is kind of arbitrary is because we have this face here, and maybe we want to triangulate it so that this this part right here is the edge, or maybe this part is the edge. Oops. Uh, when you press Control-T, it'll just collapse it into whatever it thinks it does. So here it collapsed it this way. If you wanted to collapse the other way, this is where we'd have to manually adjust it. So you can delete a face by pressing X, delete, and then just delete faces. Now we have a gap in this cube. Go to vertices, hold down shift to select some vertices, and now we can just select where we want a face to be. So we want this vertice and these vertices to be a face. So we got these two vertices selected. Press F to fill that face. So now we've created a new triangle with the edge going this way, the long way, instead of the short way. And then we can just select these vertices again to fill in a new face. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try and get the rest of it. Control T. Excuse me. Right now. Oh boy, okay. So this is our, what used to be a cube is now no longer a cube. Uh, this already looks um, more like a rock kind of. But now we're going to add some procedural elements to it. So that we can exit edit mode and be back in the mode. And down with this wrench symbol, these are modifiers. Uh, these are pretty powerful, but we're going to just go over some simple modifiers. The first one is going to be subdivide. It's the second column, and it is trying to subdivision surface towards the bottom. So this turned our angular cube into a soft shape. Uh, when you're rendering in Blender, right there. it'll use the render subdivisions. We're not rendering, so we don't care about that. We want the viewport subdivisions. So by, right now it's one. Zero is no subdivisions. So there's our original shape. Subdividing once and subdividing twice. Twice is going to be good enough for here. Uh, so it's taken our very angular shape. If you go to tab to edit mode, you'll see our polygons and then the resulting shape. That's actually due to this. Uh, we can turn this edit mode view off and just toggle between these. Um, you can see live updates if you enable edit view mode. So it kind of looks like a potato, not really like a rock, maybe like a river rock. So we can fix that. We're going to add a new modifier. This one is going to be uh, triangulate again. So that what triangulate automatically triangulates the whole thing. Uh, just as a modifier on top of the object. So your mesh can stay whatever you want, and the triangulate will just triangulate on top of that. The reason we're doing that is because the subdivide will make, uh, it's making squares. So we're just triangulating the modifier just to consolidate those squares into triangles. Uh, the next modifier is going to be a decimate modifier. All of these are in the second column, by the way, the generate column. So we got subdivision, then we got triangulate, and now we have decimate. 
decimate will take your mesh and just collapse vertices and polygons and tries based on a ratio um, uh, that you select. So collapse is default. The other useful one is planar. So first we're going to see what collapse does. So right now we're at one ratio, so that's all the polygons. We can start cutting these down and start cutting down the ratio of polygons. And Blender will automatically start culling, or not culling, but just removing vertices and faces. So you can break this down way down. Now it's going to start looking angular again. Uh, the other useful one is planar. Planar will do the same thing, but now it's based on angle and not really just like a general over, uh, over overview. So if we set the angle limit, we can start getting something really oblique. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use collapse, just because it looks more natural for a rock anyway. Uh, so if we go back into edit mode, and we start messing around these vertices, we can start seeing how our shape gets changed. Unfortunately, the decimate modifier isn't viewable in, in edit mode like the subdivide is, but you can just tap in and out to see how it's changed. Since we started with a cube, and we didn't really add much geometry, all right, so uh, the shapes we make are kind of limited, so you can start adding more geometry. I'm going to disable the view of the subdivide just so it's clear. Okay. So we can start adding more geometry up there. Um, select just like with an edge selected, okay. and then we can select you uh, and then another edge. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. So you select two opposite edges, right click, and then subdivide, which is at the top. So now we're subdividing an edge into two edges. Uh, it'll bring up the subdivide box. And we can actually change the number of cuts. So you have one cut or two, or up to ten. In this case, we're just going to go with two. So now we've actually generated new new edges and new vertices on this one face. So now we have more geometry to mess around with. And I'm just going to try and re-triangulate for good measure. Triangles are also a good shape for preventing invalid solids because a triangle is the minimum vertices you need to define a face. So it won't ever be inside out or concave. So now we've got this weird shape. And if we exit edit mode, you can see what it looks like on the rock, as a rock. Uh, bring down the decimate some more. That just that's just on the ground somewhere. So I want the flat, the bottom to be flat. Um, we can do that. I'm gonna turn it into wireframe mode, or Z wireframe. Press one on my number pad to lock it to a a forward orthographic view. I'm in wireframe mode with vertices select. I press C to do a circle select, or B to do a box select. Oh, well. uh, ah. I'm now stuck in circle select. I was hoping this wouldn't happen. Is this a common occurrence? I don't know if it's a bug or not, but it just happens. Oh, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> okay. Uh, circle select, I'm going to select these bottom vertices. I'm going to do scale, zero. So now that's zero, but that's not very useful. Lock it to the z-axis. And now I've scaled what I've selected, zero, in the z-axis. So now it's a flat bottom. And if we go back to solid mode, uh, we can kind of see. Yeah, so this is now flat, and this edge is down. I'm also going to break down this. So now exiting edit mode, we can kind of see how the rock has a flat bottom now. This comes up a lot. So. Uh, when you drag something, you can also lock it to two axes and ignore one. 
So I'm dragging this one, but I'm dragging it kind of up and down when I really just want to go across the flat plane that I created. So I'm going to hold Shift Z, and now that's going to do every axis but Z. So I'm dragging it, uh, Shift Z, and this is only in the X Y plane. So it's still flat. If I didn't do that and I drag it like this way, it's not flat anymore. It's still kind of rounded on the bottom, so I can add in a bevel. So I'm gonna try to select these bottom vertices, these bottom edges, holding on shift since alt didn't work, didn't like that. Didn't thought the loop was this way. Or I can just select these faces and then draw the bevel. Not quite what I wanted. Round off the bottom? Yeah, I'm going to select the outside. Yeah, the outside edges is what you should do. There you go. That's what I wanted. So, since now we created more loops at the bottom, the subdivide is going to like split this face, but then this face is not going to be split as much because instead of splitting across this whole face and then smoothing it, like chopping this part off, that's only going to chop off here and here. So now it's more flat on the bottom. That probably wasn't the best explanation. <laughs> no, no, I, I right. understood everything. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this so I can create a copy of my original rock and keep modifying it. But then I'm going to create a new copy that I can apply all these modifiers to and get it ready for exporting. So to duplicate something is Shift D. Now I have a copy. Uh, I'm going to keep the original here, and I'm actually going to hide it. <coughs> so if you have the collections menu up here, there's a filter button. If you can't see this, it's because it's too small. So if they get hidden, so you want to make this bigger. Uh, then you can filter out, and it's this like TV symbol. When you hide something in uh, Blender, it's H. But that's just a temporary hide, that's a quick hide. You can bring it back with Alt-H. Shift H will hide everything that's not selected. But since I want to hide it permanently for now, I'm going to click this TV's icon. That hides it in the viewport. So now if I Alt H or hide, click hide, it doesn't get it. Moved. So I can bring this uh, duplicated rock back to the middle. You can type in locations. And with Blender's cool because you can actually do math in these boxes. So I can subtract a number here. Uh, or I can copy this by hovering over it, pressing Ctrl C, and then pasting it into here. So that's just a quick way of getting a specific number somewhere. If I want to place this in a game, I kind of want the bottom to be the zero axis. So right now, uh, the, the origin point is kind of in the middle here, not exactly on the bottom. If we click these bottom vertices, you can see the local Z is some negative number. But we want this to be at zero. So I can actually copy this negative number, select everything, type in this box, paste that negative number. So now I'm going to subtract this much. But subtracting is going to bring it down, so I'm actually going to add that number. And now the bottom, the origin is at the bottom. And I'm actually going to go ahead and apply these modifiers. So now we have a, a mesh that's that you can edit, and you're now editing these individual parts. So this actually looks pretty good already. I'm just going to collapse my distance to catch any overlapping vertices if I have any. Uh, looks like I did not. I have that case clearly enabled, but just in case, I'm going to shift N to recalculate the normals. So this looks good. And then just going to make sure my scale is 1, my rotation is 0, location 0. So I'm just going to, alright, that's ready. I'm just going to export. So I get objects, scale 1. Now that 
we have a rock, we can actually start creating a, a, an environment. So we can just copy and paste this rock everywhere, shape it, scale. Uh, I get like a, like a mountain kind of going on here. Yeah, and that's just for one rock asset. And since these are procedural, we can go back to our original rock. I'm going to hide this one. We can go back to our original rock and just mess up these vertices again. Just however you want. And now we have a new rock. And then just apply these, clean it up, export it, and boom, new rock. Make a new cube, apply these modifiers, mess up the vertices, new rock. <laughs> Any questions? Does anyone suck? <laughs> Some people might might have gotten stuff. Yeah. Where, where did you get it? Oh, uh, sort of trying to keep up with hotkeys. Oh yeah, hotkeys. Yeah. I wanted to print out like a like a hotkey reference, but then just like blender hotkeys. Uh, there was just really long there was just way too many, and I was like, well, this is impractical. I was going to say a suggestion, since you're recording this video, you should have a thing that says, like, bottle of things you use. So it's like, not like how to do things, it's like, I remember we did this, this, let me look this up. Yeah, so like, I went over grabbing, and screw, and scale, lots of axes. And use these hot and then it's just like, yeah. And then you have a there's a lot of things you said where it's just like, it's not I don't need that right now, but I need mean, it later. It's just like, experience. It's experience. A lot of times you can also just put a space and search for what you want. Google is fantastic. Blender is a very, it's popular in open source. It's been around a while. So just Google whatever you want for Blender, and nine times out of ten you'll get an answer that you're looking for. Sometimes the, the shortcuts that they mention yeah, is super good. Yeah, but the thing you want to do is the same, so you can like just search what you want to do and then 2.8, and you should get it. 2.8 was a huge jump for Blender versus all the previous versions. So now you're setting your rotation. So that's how you also would set your scale, is control A. And you can use uh, um, rotation and all then we want to talk about textures in that one. So if I wanted to that would be more useful to actually do control A and set scale. And then you can change the you get to the thing. Is. If you have a negative scale in here and then you set scale, it'll reverse your normal. And then you have to recalculate. Oh, okay. That was the issue that he addressed earlier. Okay. Alright. Start with a cube. Or a cylinder. Mm -hmm. Take your cube and find it. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use a mirror modifier because what I want to do on one side of the spaceship, I want to be symmetric with the other side. So the modifier is just mirror. And it, it looks like it didn't do anything. That's because the cube is perfectly symmetrical. So I'm going to take, uh, pick an edge. And this one is on the y-axis, so green is y. So over here, the median point, I'm going to set it to zero. And the mirror still didn't do anything. That's because it's set to mirror on the x-axis. So I'm actually going to select the y-axis. And now it's mirrored across. It's mirrored along the y-axis, this half cube. How did you move that side of the middle? I selected the face. And then up here in the transform, I set, set the medium to 0. Now we actually have a mirror, so whatever I do on this side will get mirrored to the other side. Uh, you guys can have created liberty here for this spaceship just because it's mostly the same thing we did with the bottle. So select a face, extrude it, select a face, extrude it, and then just start messing around with edges and beveling it. So control B to bevel. H, I guess. Tranche. A what? Tranche. Oh, it's a tranche. Well, tranche is like. I guess yeah, it's more like a. Like, 
against left rotate. Okay, so the other move is if you're going to edit it, you're going to edit it. You're going to edit it. You're in face flicker now, so you want to do one, sleep one, two, three, all those three options there. You're in face flicker now, so you want to do one, sleep one, two, three, all those three options there. You're in face flicker now, so you want to do one, sleep one, two, three, all those three options there. You're in face flicker now, so you want to do one, sleep one, two, three, all those three options there. It's a tron ship. Yeah, I see the tron ship. Yeah, so you can say you can get it to zero. That way you can get it all. It's both sides. I'm going to do this. There you go. Okay. If you're free reign at this point, to make whatever you want. I'm going to do whatever you want. Just think about something and shoot something. I'm going to texture this later, so. Go over to this. And then take a face. And then you can select these faces and just make a shape. And then it's, yeah. Feel free to be creative, ask questions. Please ask questions. Yeah, I don't think it's possible. I'm going to go to the modifier. I'm sorry. One thing I didn't mention before is inset faces. Uh, this one, the shortcut is I. And so I can take a face and inset faces. Uh, so I can create a boundary around one of the edges. And then from here, I can extrude inwards. And that kind of gets like an edge and kind of thruster shape here. Uh, inset faces, which is I. Or this one here. The older versions of Blender actually had text for this, so you can actually like read the word inset faces instead of having to know what this picture means. So I'm just going to subdivide the wrong edges. So uh, then create like a runner here by right, extreme that out. I'm going to grab, and if I press G again, then actually instead of grabbing, I'm going to move along the edges. So I grab it with G, and then press G again, and now it's moving along the edges that I think that the edge came from. And if I hold down Alt, you can actually see the lines, and Alt will let you go the other way. So now you have that. <laughs> For this one, I'm going to scale it down, but it's just going to shrink the whole thing. So if I want to scale it in only, if I don't, if I don't want to scale it the Z axis, but I want to scale it the X and Y, I can press Shift Z, and now it's only scaling. It's not scaling the Z. I haven't talked about snapping before. Uh, the snapping is going to be up, up here. Oh wow, this got really compressed. <laughs> okay. All right. So this magnet icon is the snapping. If I enable magnet, then it's actually snapping on the grid. No. But the grid is very coarse when you're in the view. So when you log into an orthographic view, you'll actually see the grid here. I'm going to go to wireframe mode so you can see it better. And when I zoom in, it creates a little smaller separation. That's your current snap grid. So when I press G, it'll turn it around. If I press it's not on the grid, you can snap it to the grid. You can do Shift S. And then snap selection to grid. Uh, I made this object without the grid, so all these are on the grid, so I'm not going to worry about that. But I can snap things to vertices as well. So I'm going to go to vertex snapping, uh, select it, 
drag it in the x direction, and I'm going to hover over this point. So now it's going to snap to the to this vertice. But since I'm only moving in the x direction, it's not actually going to the vertice. So if I would have just dragged it normally, now it's joined up with that one. But since I'm locking into the x-axis, it's staying horizontal. Right, and now whatever I do is. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to create a cork fit here. So I wanted that to be straight here instead of way back there. Maybe someone would have asked, how do you undo and redo? Undo is Control-Z. Redo is Control-Shift-Z, not Control-Y. And most, like, I prefer Control-Shift-Z, just personally. Anyone else need any help figuring out mirrors or something? You do? All right. <laughs> oh, I was gonna have as well. Yeah, but like, like yeah, you first. Oh gosh, uh, they're just slightly not pointing um, in the same direction. I don't All right, in this case, I'm yeah. In this case, I want to bring this edge inwards, uh, but I'm actually like yeah. overlapping. Oh my There's some vertices so here. Uh, this vertice is kind of in my way, so if I drag this a lot wide, it's gonna actually pass the vertice, and I have this really ugly face there. So I'm actually going to delete that vertice, uh, go to the vertice, select, select that vertice, delete. But I'm not going to actually delete the vertice, because I'll actually delete all the faces attached to it. I'm going to dissolve the vertice. Uh, that might still not work. No. So actually, I'm going to dissolve the edge instead. So this edge is all the edge. And now, this is a singular face, and there's no extra vertice there. So I can bring this nice and clean. I'm also going to grab this vertice. Select this vertice, uh, and maybe this isn't as easy to tell, so I'm going to use faces. When you select something in Blender, the lightest face is your active face. So I select two things. This one's like a darker orange than this one. The lighter face is the active face. It's usually the last thing you've selected. Uh, so if I select this vertice and then this vertice, this one's the active selected. This one's darker orange. All end to merge. At last, is going to go to the last one I selected. At first, it's going to be the first one I selected, merging it to the last one. Right, that, kind of, that looks like a spaceship. I'm happy with that. I want other spaceships. Kind of amazing. Plane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I'm about to throw this in Unity and just have oh, WSD add forces to it. You guys ready to texture it? I'm going to do the texturing within Blender, so it's going to be a little bit um, not so if you have the best you practice, but a lot of All right, well, uh, okay. right you have a spaceship, so I'm going to duplicate it to keep the original. What's up? How are you merging? The merge. All 10. All 0. All spaceships. You're going to want to be My first spaceship, do I still have a I was like messing around before this. Yeah, I've used 3ds Max so say, for like, used for like a couple of years when I was in high school, and yeah, those I remember when Blender sucked. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's uh, gotten much better. Uh, <laughs> what is what is duplicates? Uh, like uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one's like a boat. This one's like a boat though. <laughs> oh, have you ever seen those? Uh, it, really, it really looks like a uh, like a swamp boat. Yeah, exactly. I can no, 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 no. Here, at the end of every model, what you want to do is clean up it, clean it up. So, uh, <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> it's Hydro Thunder. Oh, no. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> Alright, so how do you texture this bad boy? Uh, well, first of all, you apply all your modifiers. And then second of all, make sure your scale is one to one to one. Make sure your scale is one to one when you unwrap something, when you go to do textures. Because if not, it's going to be all wonky. Apply scale. Control A, scale for object. Uh, apply scale. If, you're, if your UV map ends up being weird 9 times out of 10, it's because you didn't apply scale. Alright, so now, uh, we're going to sit it here, I'm going to click this void and go, Oh, so, that's how do that? Uh, so, in Blender, all these junctions between 
property boxes, you can actually create new windows out of those. So your cursor changes. You click and drag outwards, and I got a new window. Uh, we're going to change this to the UV window. So this symbol here at the top left is the editor type. So we're the UV editor. Now I got this square. So UVs is how textures are rendered in games and on models. So your coordinates are X, Y, Z. Those are your 3D coordinates. And then U and V are 2D coordinates for a texture. So U is, well actually I forget which ones are U, but U V. Right, so now we can go to edit mode. Whoa, look, that's our game we started with. Uh, it's all ruined. So if we actually try to apply this texture to this, it's not going to work. I'm going to go ahead and create the texture just so we can watch what's happening. Uh, so you guys can create a material as well. So down here at the bottom, this circle with the, with the other squares in it, that's for materials. I love the wacky shape that everyone has. There's a deep <laughs> I want to see these, like everybody takes screenshots. Like, they're they're, they're great. They're just like the spiders and that's weird. So Blender already has a default material for you. That's fine. Material zero. Uh, a note here. This gets confusing because you have like a plus symbol here and like new. New will always create a new material, but you don't always want that. Plus sign adds a new material slot to your object. So sometimes you already have materials created, so but you don't want to create a new material. So you add a slot and then you select the material you want for it. Uh, otherwise, you just start creating copies and copies. <laughs> now you have like a million materials. Oh. Yeah, so keep that in mind, just like a tip. Which, what do you want us to, what do you want us to Don't do? Don't click new, click, yeah. just yeah. use what's already there. So click the plus sign next to the little yeah. list of them instead of the new with a plus sign. It's okay if you create a new one, just, um, it's just like a tip for like future reference. So I all right, so now you create a new material. So uh, nothing the, changed. That's because the default yeah, view back. is just the letter back. viewport. Uh, so you press C and then you can preview. Uh, click on the uh, now we can start seeing our material. It's and white. Click the, material that you're uh, the base color, we can change that. So, you don't, so if you have but too much mesh, you don't have to create the same material. Just to say, obvious color color. So actually, these are nodes. And I'm not going to go over nodes, just know that that's what it is. The right circle here will let you change the input node for the base color. So right now it's just the base color. But we're going to change the input node to be uh, a new texture. Render. So now we can put in a picture, so a and that'll be the base color. Z rendered. Uh, image texture. It's black, the default image is nothing. Uh, if we like, click here, there's nothing to. So here we're actually going to create a new image. And now uh, it's created a new image. So we want to set resolution for the image, and we want to. The default is black. Uh, 1,000 by 1,000 by 1,000 is default. That's fine. That's a 1K texture. It's powers of two, and it's always going to be a square. The color, you can still have a default color. But what we're actually going to do is a generated texture. So right now it's blank. So I'm going to pick color grid. And then now you go here. And then okay. So what color grid does? It lets you see what you're doing UV wise. Just so you can like clearly tell what's going on. So now if we go to click the object and go to edit mode, the so UV box will now show us the texture we have. Hopefully everyone's at this step because it's really helpful. Wait, uh, Alberto, how'd you get to the image texture thing there? Uh, okay, let me back up. So you have your material. I'm gonna start with this one. So it probably looks like that, right? Yeah. The base color, we're gonna change the shader for that. So it's this circle. Yeah. And it's called an image texture. It's in the second column. Yeah. Okay. So you put that. It's black by default. Uh, I already created an image, so there's something there. But you guys are gonna have to create a new image. And in this box, that, to generate the new image, the generated type instead of blank is gonna be color grid. And then you just click OK. Okay. Uh, click this material. We're doing good on time too. Uh, it should already be on the side. I'm actually very happy to have it as color. It's all being stretched to start with. Wireframe, look at that. You're going to want to get that rendered. So, there you go. How'd you have a material in the first place? I'm sorry. You have one actually? Yeah. I think I was just first thing. First thing. It's fine. It's fine. It's just like for future reference in case you have like a million materials. No, you just made a question. 
Alright, yes. use that so go down to materials. Okay. Which is the little faces. Yeah, it's going to look messed up. Okay. So you know, so it's it's going to be a It's trying to squeeze all your vertices onto a square, onto like a center line. Okay. Uh, so it's supposed to look. Okay. Okay. And then it's supposed to look messed up. Point of face to color grid. And then it looks like a nice little color grid. Oh, so you have to Oh, well, okay, you have your options selected. And then make sure like the material is applied. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alright, so if you don't see your material and you've applied it and everything, it's because your shader viewport is in the wrong, it's using the wrong shader. So you press Z, so you're probably still in solids mode. So you go to material preview mode. Uh, or it's just this these options up here. So it's a solid and material view. Uh, yeah. I'm talking to the you want this one though? Uh, you can also switch this to look down. So, you can go down to the material preview. You're going to need this one. You don't need it, but it helps a lot. Because then you can actually see what's happening. Like here, you can see that these vertices are all like they're not enough. It's a solid color. You wouldn't be able to tell. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a few things that you can do in the previous edition. Do you see what I made that plus? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so there's a little, okay. you can feel like a little, I can't see what the rules are. Oh, you have to use, um, oh, okay. These are already just two models. It's all models. Oh, wow. It's really hidden. Okay. Welcome to Blender. Welcome to Blender. What was hidden? The top one. I don't know. What was hidden? The top one. Oh, I see. That was really awesome. So, what was hidden? Oh, yeah, great. You like kind of hover in between the points here and drag it out. Oh, I know what his is. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't. You're good. Yes. Yeah. Go to and everyone else is good. Mm -hmm. uh, is everyone good? Are you good on yours? Mitchell, is everyone good? I'm uh, yeah. trying to help everyone be good. Everyone, I think, are really good. Okay. These guys, oh. these two are good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Oh, but yeah. I have two teams because one of them is the original without, yeah. without applying the modifiers. Okay. So he, he always he's doing a good practice, which is whenever you do apply modifiers, have a copy that is unapplied with modifiers, because once you apply modifiers, you cannot unapply them. It uh, does a lot of changes that are really hard to fix. If you although apply to it, be fair, don't. once you start unwrapping it, you definitely don't want to make any changes because you gotta re unwrap it. That's some ugh. That's <laughs> disgusting. I hate it. Sorry, so I mean you're sometimes you can salvage it, color, but a lot of times you have to start over. So you, you wanna make sure your mesh is done. Before you unwrap, so you don't have to redo a lot of color. Okay. okay. All right. So once we're ready to unwrap, we go to edit mode, select everything, and if you want, just want a quick and dirty unwrap. Unwrap. The unwrap menu is U. Uh, select everything. Because it'll only unwrap what's selected. So select everything. Press U. And if you want a quick and dirty unwrap, just to be done. Smart UV project. And then in uncheck stretch to the bounce. Because if not, it stuff's gonna get elongated and work. Oh, I'm gonna have to okay. And look, it's a quick and easy unwrap. That's not ideal. We're gonna go over a better way of doing it. But that's fine for now. So that's what you guys can work with. Uh, if you look in your UV editor, you can now see that it's spread out stuff kind of evenly. Oh, did you? Oh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, we're going to have to have So, that means whenever we uh, are so, uh, even to that here, uh, the island margin uh, was really so small. Mm -hmm. So, it actually like kind of touched uh, everything together. So, if you have a really low resolution texture, pixels are shot to be all over. And you'll have like, you'll have weird edge cases where uh, this pixel 
So we'll start feeding into this pixel, and then we have one colors everywhere. So another way to fix that is like all of your stuff in UV error. UV error. Yeah. You see UV drop down on there, and it's called pack islands. So each of these islands uh, is just like a like a piece of the puzzle. Do you want to do for these pack islands? Yeah, so there's different select modes here. So you have your vertex, edge, and face, but there's also this new one called island. So you actually select everything that's attached to that. Since it's smart UV project, a lot of these islands are really tiny. So that's not very useful, but just but just like a tip. So select everything, and then pack islands. And this will just reorganize everything to be as big as Blender can calculate. A lot of the times, it's not perfect. But once we do that, we now have this option to override the margin. So the default margin of 0 0.001 is really small, and you have a good chance of colors bleeding over in the pixels. I just use 0.25. That's a lot, especially for this. This is a really high res texture, so that's actually too much. Yep, come in a second. You're good. Where's the pack island that word? Uh, the UV drop down. It's under UV. It's so down 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 here. Down. I'm already here. First time. Right. Right. Yeah. Window. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Window. Uh, window. Which window? The pack island. It just reorganizes it so it fits to the square better. Uh, with yes. the mark. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So oh. after you pack islands, press F9. Or maybe you already applied it, so you have to like redo it. Uh, Try pack islands again, but without clicking. Because clicking confirms it. Oh. Okay, uh, and what, what are we doing with your margin? We're just making it so that vertices aren't so close to each other, so that the pixels overlap. So like, these are really close, and you've only got two and a half pixels between them. So stuff will start overlapping. So what kind of value will uh, Well, let's see. I picked 0.25. That's still a little bit. So I'm trying to make 0.5. So you have to actually Yeah, mine's not doing that. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, point oh, is a good number. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we only have one piece of Oh, that's So your selection all right so that's just like all right that's uh now we're ready to start painting it so I'm actually going to create a new texture that's blank. This one's already blank for me. Okay, so um, I just do this quick on the Yeah, so I create, I want to, I'm going to start painting on the texture. So I just created a new material that with a blank texture, so I can start from scratch. Uh, Where's your original? My original material is material, and then I just created a new... So that's where you don't want to do the button you're talking about. This UV grid is so you can cleanly, so you can see what Unwrap is doing. Because whenever I have the black, oops. All right, so I know it's whenever I have the black texture, I can't, I don't know that this isn't unwrapped properly. But when I have the the, the grid texture, I can actually see like, oh yeah, this these are all they, they all look right. Not, nothing stretched, nothing's worked. Yeah. So I just create a new material. Uh, you can un. Link a material by pressing the X. So I've cleared it and then create a new one. So basically, you have is you have double vertices here, which means that you extruded one. All right. So now we have this blank one. 
So okay, uh, actually merge this to basically this erase all the other vertices. So now when you do this, you won't get that extra vertice. If you want to uh, paint this in a separate program, so, so you, you can actually export your UV layout. Both of those so yeah. that's really useful if you want like paint.net or Photoshop, and you want to get like specific details. So UV, export UV layout, and that'll export what the, these mean. So like it'll export this this layout, in, so that you can take that picture into Photoshop or Paint on that, and then start painting it, and you know when where the edges are for each. Yep, that's us. Yeah, you could. We could do that. Like, you can put whatever picture you want in here. Oh, wow. uh, using uh, what material are you using for painting? Uh, just a new blank one. New blank material? Okay, so go... A new blank texture. New blank texture. You can use the same material if you want, technically. How would... Uh, okay, so go here. So you can start with your default material, and then instead of untitled, uh, you can uh, unlink that, and then create a new texture here. But I just create a new material, so that I have a folder. Well, that, that, that's what you do. You're, you're clicking all over places and going through different lists, and I don't know which is yeah. what's material or texture. Face color... Oh. Oh, I guess, it, okay, yeah. So a material is a shader, a texture is a picture. Okay, That's it. So a texture so is this black picture, mm -hmm. and the material so is just the shader that goes along with it. So yes. What is that list versus hey, what is the list of Bob Alberto, what's that untitled 002 you have set as your image texture that? That is a new blank texture. How do you get that? Uh, unlink the one that's already there, and then create a new one. Okay. And it's blank. Okay. Uh, so, so what list are you saying? Yeah. You, you have that, that thing you can go Yes, and what the that versus the thing above where it says meant now above that. What is that? Yes, what is that? These are the assigned materials. So if I, I create, I can assign more materials to one object so like the more plus, that's more material spots. So why do you, okay, because when you're using the other list, the, uh, the smaller button, it looks like you keep just changing the material on the screen. Yeah, so I, this is one material slot. I'm just changing the material assigned to that material slot. So I don't have more than one material slot. This is now... So what's the point? So, so the point here, is so that I can keep both. So I can I, keep this material and then have a new one that's blank. The top list is like different slots, so you can make multiple for the objects. So if you wanted the windows to be one color and the body to be yeah. different color. Yeah, yeah. so okay. The yeah, let me, I menu down. down there is like all the materials you have saved in your like file system. Yeah, so why did you make it different? Why aren't we just working on it? Because I just, I want to keep a rec, I just want to keep that saved. Okay, that's, that's right. Uh, so, your friend just made a good point that you can just assign faces to materials. So I'm going to add more slots and just make a new material. I'm not going to use a texture for this, I'm just going to use the base color. I'm going to call this one Windows. I'm going to call this one Body. And I'm going to call this one, well, I'm going to make a new one. Engine. Uh, engine is going to be yellow. Body is going to be red. Windows are going to be blue. All right. And now I'm in edit mode, and I can select faces. So I have faces selected, and I'm just going to start selecting these faces. And I'm going to click the material I want and assign. So what was the? What do we do? All the UV? Do not have any questions? Uh, that's if you want to paint texture. So is we're going to do that. But this is just another <laughs> way. Is there a way that I can do the assignments with the UV double? Like if I don't want to take it out of the software, so it looks like the UV double. Yeah. Like yeah. So yeah. Like, so like, oh, one. like this allowed me to see because like my model's got some weird amounts of blank faces. So select, um, like say these are your windows. Can you hold various different faces all over the place, right? If I want to like use the groupings from the islands and set those all to just a black material. And it's like again. Uh, oh, what just wants to do material? Yes. Yeah. So that would be doing not doing this. So it's. Uh, All right, well, the pull here. This is like two different ways of doing it. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, if you want to continue with the ways you're going, you'd say that I'm going to back to the window. I think you could probably select, and now that will be that blue. All right. And then back to the window. You got a lot of bevel faces. All right, one material, blank material. No, no, you didn't select from the back to the back. Blank. I have one material. Yes. Using the UVs. Yes. Uh, and now I can move, I can paint it now. So, there you go. 
instead of object right, mode, and, uh, there is this problem to the internet mode. mode, so could you okay. and, uh, you just uh, go out? Oh, missing the uh, 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 That is this merge alt and that distance. Great. Oh, 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 oh. 72 vertices right there. there. And then I should now like we, redo the other one. Since I used the black, the black, black texture, I couldn't tell what was missing. Because yeah. the default missing is black. So you move like yeah. can eight of your vertices. And they just double and use okay. this. Yeah. So make sure you clean yeah. yeah. it. I remember that I should have done that. I just couldn't remember exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Still is yeah. what I wanted. Go over to your UEW. Where it shows you all the shapes of your ship. Yeah. Okay. If you can't see something. If you wanted to select an island over there that was your window. And then assign that to blue. Oh. Is now, that um, that's where I thought you were going with this? If that's not how you do it, it's like a like fill. I, I guess so. That's I guess to, I don't uh, still. Okay. So is that okay. just a texture over there? This is a, a texture. Bit, okay. Now you don't. You want to apply like okay. materials to a face? So you can your yeah, that was the other way I was doing it. Right, making new materials for each type of color. But like I have some nasty sections of many 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 faces. And like you can double separate into those islands. Oh, okay. So you want a cleaner way of doing it. I guess. This, the, the smart UV was a quick and dirty way, which is what happened to you. Yeah. So if you want a cleaner way of unwrapping, um, so basically you actually want to start marking the seeds. So unwrapping is like origami, where you take a 3D model and you just unwrap it into a flat sheet of paper. Uh, the, UV, the smart UVs will just guess and just throw everything wherever it can fit. But if you want to make it proper, you'll actually start selecting edges and marking a seam. So that is where a seam is going to go. In our origami, that gets you want to yeah. So you probably want to mark a seam around the sure. edges of yeah. your circle or whatever. So yeah. and then when that gets UV, it'll do a best guess and try to flatten that into a, a circle. Okay. So finish teaching. You're just continue teaching the way you want. Okay. Teach. Yeah. So another way, which would kind of help in your case, uh, this is just painting. So maybe you don't want that. You can export this image and use it as a texture and export this model. So I'm just going to do it quickly. So image, save as, uh, I'm untitled. And then and you click on the specific faces. Object mode, file, export, FBX. Uh, where is this? Project, space. Alright, yeah. So spaceship. And actually since I didn't like uncheck any materials, you need is gonna automatically try to import the materials. Uh none. Okay, never mind. Uh yeah, alright, so now we gotta take this DPC where did I save it? I probably do. I think it's because it's not a texture. Oh, it's texture. Nice way to export it. Yeah. Have you played Oh, have you played Yeah. Wait, Ark? Like Ark, the game, the board game? Yeah, the board game. Oh, I played it once at home and it didn't work. I think it's a board game not work? It had a it lot of balance. Really, really balance. Oh, okay. Alright, so this is just a texture, and like I said, texture is just a picture. You need a shader to go with it. So now we need a great material. Really quickly. Uh, material attached to this to there. And make it to the spaceship. And there we go. Yes. What? Yes. Right. Man, making games. It's, yeah. Uh, but that's not what you wanted. So what you wanted was. Oh geez. All right. You should edit it in paint. You should edit the texture. In yeah. Paint. So this is kind of like paint. So I so I export the image, and now it's right here. So I can open this and paint up that. Oh. And I'm also going to export the UV layout so it's useful. This is how you make money in games. You just paint that different ways. Different sometimes. <laughs> yeah, the pay extra for the gold. Alright, so I have paint open, and I have no idea where the UVs are, so paint here is going to be kind of useless. So I'm, I, I'm exporting the UV layout. Uh, here we go. Now we're 
flying across the Yeah, I know. I'm having fun. <laughs> Alright, now I can see the UVs. Well. And now you can really just start painting. Oh, it's painting it's stuff. like a butterfly. Alright, well, there's my texture. Paint XP. And I'm going to reimport this here. If you're going for that retro look, I'm not. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> there it is. I'm going to say hi. <laughs> this is hi. Okay. All right. So now the other way of making textures, which is probably where I should find instead of doing all this. Um, I'm going to clear this. Oops. Clear that. And I made one for body. Oh, and then body. New. Engine. New. Uh, Wait, is it? that list, do you just build that list up to tell it what the spaceship currently has? Yes, there's that's a slot. That's it. That makes the slots. That, so you have, this, the uh, slots never answer my question. Uh, it's the ships holding those. That's it. So what? They're oh, materials. The ship. Yeah, so these the materials ship. are in, they're in so the ship object. For so yeah. the ship now has three material slots that are three separate materials. That makes sense. And each material has its own UVs too. Yeah. So you can actually. Uh, isolate, well actually after you apply them, so you have to apply these windows and face the left. Why you have to have the So now I can actually select what I've assigned, and then I can get all these. Mm -hmm. This is still probably slightly from misunderstanding, right? I have that, that unwrapped UV. See that the island I selected? It has so many little faces in it, right? Yeah. I want to assign a material to all of those faces without having to select them by hand of the scene or something. I have okay. So you can actually Oh, got it. Alright. So there's two kinds of select modes in UV. Oh crap. Alright, let me watch the editor. Alright, so up here, you can see like there's two arrows going. Yes. So one of them is a sync selection, and the other one is an unsync selection. So unsync means I can deselect what my 3D view has, but everything stays here. And it only it like corresponds to what I like here to what I like in the 3D view. The, the unsync, it only shows up if it's selected in 3D view. Yeah, you talked about it so Okay. It's it's confusing, but this is what you want. So uh, select unselect everything. You can press L to select linked. So hover over what you want to select and press L, and it should select everything that's linked to that. Oh, yes, no, maybe. Yeah. All right. So now you so now it's synced to what you have in the UV mesh. It's synced to the things that we're Yeah. So I'm going to design. Well, why did you take a gun? Aha! So something really simple, but then you gotta do this whole roundabout way of doing it because it's thunder. Yeah, no, okay, that's cool. So it's like, that's still around in the color thing. Yeah. Alright, well, okay. So I have this. I can export this again. Uh, I'm gonna call this one Spaceship 2. So just how many minutes? Import it into here. Two. So actually, a different here you'll see now in the materials for the importer. Now uh, there's three slots. This is what you saw for like the origin. Yes. So these are slots. The, the one that has a texture only has one slot, and that's the whole ship. And you're using an image texture to get that color. This one, you're using three separate material slots and three separate materials to get specific faces of a certain material. Oh look, the, the baseball bats kind of look like they're landing legs. <laughs> Alright, so there's our ship. Make sure that they save that so they have access to it next week. Why? Uh, why? Just make sure they don't have it. Okay, make sure you save your ship so you have access to it next week. For some reason. 